Ginkgo Bioworks hit a rough patch in the fourth quarter of 2023, reporting lackluster results and offering a less than rosy outlook for 2024. While external factors may have played a role, it's becoming apparent that Ginkgo's trajectory doesn't quite match the lofty expectations set when it went public in 2021. There are doubts about Ginkgo's business for a while, hoping to see signs that would prove us wrong. Unfortunately, the signs pointing to potential issues seem to be multiplying. With moderate growth, hefty cash burn, and a lack of clear value creation downstream, investor confidence in Ginkgo's future could take a hit, possibly leading to further declines in its stock price. Now, Ginkgo's unveiling the Ginkgo Technology Network, a collaboration initiative roping in various companies to bolster its R&D programs for customers. It's got a bunch of partners lined up, spanning AI, genetic medicines, biologics, and manufacturing. While it's a smart move to expand capabilities, the motive behind this network isn't crystal clear. It could be a response to the need for beefed-up support for biopharma clients. But the exact game plan seems a bit fuzzy to me. Ginkgo Bioworks has been making moves on the acquisition and partnership fronts lately, expanding its capabilities in various areas. Acquisitions, Reverie Labs, snagged for its AIML tools aiding drug discovery, Proof Diagnostics, added genome engineering tools for therapeutic and diagnostic purposes. Patch Biosciences, brought in for its AI models in sequence design for gene and RNA therapies. These acquisitions are aimed at beefing up Ginkgo's presence in the biopharma arena, but I wouldn't bet the farm on them transforming Ginkgo's prospects overnight. Partnerships, Ginkgo's been shaking hands with a bunch of players across different sectors. FGN, getting funding to produce sustainable milk protein using CO2 and electricity. Arbor Biotechnologies, teaming up for precision gene editing. Agrivale, delving into next-gen AG biological products. Synplogen, offering DNA manufacturing and gene therapy platform services. Foremost Farms, cooking up tech to repurpose dairy co-products. Vivici, aiming for novel dairy protein production. Green Lab, developing an enzyme to tackle forever chemicals. U.S. Department of Energy, working on algal crop protection solutions. Ginkgo is also diving into biosecurity partnerships, like the one with Illumina, to cook up biosurveillance tech using Illumina products and Concentric's bioradar. Plus, some of Ginkgo's previous partnerships have seen outcomes, good and bad. LightBio got USDA approval to sell bioluminescent petunias in the US, but revenue's not exactly shooting through the roof. Synlogic pulled the plug on its Symphony 3 study after it looked like it wouldn't hit its main goal. Now, it's downsizing and exploring options, which highlights the risks of banking too much on downstream value. These moves paint a picture of Ginkgo hustling to carve out its space in the biotech world, but it's clear there are hurdles and uncertainties along the way. Ginkgo's collaboration with Kronos seems to be making steady progress on the technical front, but the real-world gains for both companies remain fuzzy. Back in June 2022, Ginkgo hit its third out of eight target productivity milestones for producing THCV. Now, Kronos is rolling out products containing CBG, CBC, and CBN, indicating that Ginkgo might have nailed the productivity targets for at least four molecules. As a result, Ginkgo's stake in Kronos has risen to 8.8 .8 million shares. However, Kronos is currently in the red when it comes to enterprise value, indicating investors aren't too confident about its future. Despite these technical strides, Kronos seems to be shifting away from precision fermentation. They bought a hefty 84,000-square-foot facility in Canada back in 2019 to ferment cannabinoids, but come August 2023, they announced they're shutting it down. The closure affects around 60 employees and is expected to save Kronos 10 to 15 million USD annually. Kronos plans to keep supplying the market through other means, possibly relying on third-party manufacturers. Moreover, Kronos has bid adieu to the U.S. CBD market as part of its cash-saving efforts. These moves hint that fermentation production costs might be high, and demand might not be as robust as hoped. Nitrogen Fixation Partnership Ginkgo recently shook hands with 1-1 Biosciences to develop microbial products for nitrogen fixation. Ginkgo will run tests on 1-1's idea and tweak strains for optimal performance. 1-1 is eyeing a massive 100 billion USD market with its live pod for nitrogen fixation. What's intriguing is that this collab directly competes with Ginkgo's own nitrogen fixation project, kickstarted with the creation of Join Bio in 2017. It might still be a couple of years before Ginkgo has a product to offer, which could suggest it hasn't hit any breakthroughs yet. Alania Ventures Launched in 2020, Alania has already unveiled a microbe solution for purging 1-4 dioxane from water. 
The company's focus spans sustainable biosolutions for water contamination, decarbonization, and plastics recycling. Teaming up with Epoch Enviro, Alania is set to commercialize SAF, a technology that scrubs PFAS from polluted water in North America. Alania plans to enhance SAF with additives to tackle various contaminants effectively. In a major boost, Alania secured a hefty 30 million USD investment in July 2023, with BHP Ventures joining the funding round. Not stopping there, Alania is collaborating with BHP to refine iron ore using microbes, hinting at its diverse application areas. Ginkgo's bread and butter lies in cell engineering, although its revenue stream has been a bit shaky lately. Despite this, Ginkgo is still attracting new projects, especially from the biotech and pharma sectors, which isn't surprising given the challenges its platform strategy has been facing, as I've mentioned before. The cell engineering division is gradually tilting towards big players in pharma and biotech, such as Pfizer, Novo Nordisk, Merck, and Behringer Ingelheim, for various projects like RNA drug discovery, manufacturing R&D, biocatalytic enzyme development, and small molecule drug discovery. Financial picture. Ginkgo's recent financial report for the fourth quarter raises some eyebrows, especially when paired with its forward guidance. In 2023, the company saw very little revenue from downstream cell engineering, and the growth in cell engineering services slowed down as the year progressed. While service revenue dipped year over year in the fourth quarter, Ginkgo brushed it off as a timing issue, stating that underlying activity levels remained fairly consistent quarter over quarter. Looking ahead to 2024, Ginkgo anticipates adding 100 to 102 new programs, marking a whopping 41% increase year over year at the midpoint. Revenue from cell engineering is projected to reach 165 to 185 million USD, a 22% uptick year over year at the midpoint, excluding any potential downstream value. However, Ginkgo hints that the recognition of downstream value in 2024 might be significantly higher than in previous years. But here's the rub. Ginkgo is racking up substantial losses to fuel these programs, with the hope that downstream value will justify the expenditure. Yet, there's scant evidence of this happening so far. As the biosecurity sector winds down its COVID testing programs, revenue from this segment continues to nosedive. In the fourth quarter of 2023, biosecurity brought in just 8 million USD, with a measly gross profit margin of 15%. Predictions suggest biosecurity revenue might exceed 50 million USD in 2024, potentially marking a 54% drop year over year. With operating expenses staying high in 2023, and revenue taking a significant hit, Ginkgo's losses have skyrocketed in recent quarters. While there's some hope for a turnaround in 2024, with OPEX expected to decrease and revenue to inch up modestly, without any substantial downstream value recognition, Ginkgo is likely to bleed cash to the tune of hundreds of millions annually for the foreseeable future. Ginkgo's financial health looks pretty dire right now, but there's supposed to be a silver lining in the form of downstream value participation. This means the company stands to rake in around 2.4 billion USD in milestone payments alone. However, there's a catch. While Ginkgo added nearly 1.5 billion USD in potential milestone payments in 2023, it had to subtract over 1 billion USD due to program cancellations. The reasons behind these cancellations weren't elaborated on much, but Ginkgo hinted that it mostly stemmed from one customer. Despite Ginkgo's efforts to develop an intriguing technology platform, there's growing evidence that the company might not be worth as much as everyone thought. There's a lack of proof showing that its data and scale are driving better program outcomes at a lower cost, and quite a few of its high-profile programs have crashed and burned. Plus, the whole story Ginkgo's been telling revolves around downstream value participation, yet it barely saw any of that in 2023. With hefty losses, tepid growth, and a dwindling cash pile, it's likely that investors will have to grapple with these issues in the next one to two years. So after the closing bell on Thursday, Ginkgo Bioworks, NYSE DNA, dropped its fourth quarter results, and boy, did it disappoint. This company has been a bit of a letdown lately, missing its revenue targets and hemorrhaging cash left and right. And guess what? Thursday's report didn't do much to brighten the mood, sending the stock tumbling back down towards its recent lows. In case you're not familiar, Ginkgo Bioworks is all about cell programming, They've got this platform that basically tells cells what to do, helping churn out all sorts of stuff like new drugs, food ingredients, and even chemicals normally made from oil. But lately, things haven't been going according to plan. Back in November, when I last covered this stock, 
I warned about revenue disappointments and stuck to my sell rating. Since then, sure, the stock briefly shot up by over 13%, but it still lagged behind the broader market by a couple of points. And now, well, that little gain has vanished into thin air, especially after Thursday's after-hours session. So what did the Q4 numbers look like? Pretty dismal, to be honest. Ginkgo reported revenues of less than $34.8 million, down a whopping 65% from the same period last year. That's a huge miss compared to the $42.55 million that Wall Street was hoping for. The drop mainly came from winding down K-12 COVID testing in Ginkgo's biosecurity segment and missing out on some expected revenue from cell engineering. And speaking of cell engineering, that's been a sore spot for a while now. Back when Ginkgo went public through a SPAS a couple of years ago, they were talking big, saying this segment alone would rake in $628 million in revenue by 2024. But let's face it, that's a far cry from reality. Analysts have been slashing their estimates left and right, and the latest range for this year's revenue is just $215 to $235 million, way below what everyone was hoping for. And let's not forget about the spending spree Ginkgo's been on. They reported an operating loss of $178 million for Q4 and a whopping $864 million for the whole year. Ouch. And even with a big chunk of that loss being offset by stock-based compensation, it's not exactly a sustainable situation. The company ended last year with $944 million in cash, but they can't keep bleeding money forever. Now, when it comes to valuing biotech companies like Ginkgo, it's a bit tricky. These types of stocks usually trade at a premium because they've got sky-high revenue growth potential, but even by biotech standards, Ginkgo's looking pricey. While the average S&P 500 company trades at around two to three times its expected revenue for the year, Ginkgo's sitting at a hefty 10.5 times. And if analyst estimates keep dropping, that valuation could get even more stretched. So where does that leave us? Sure, things might start looking up in 2025 when biosecurity starts kicking in some recurring revenue, but right now, this stock's just too darn expensive for what it's delivering. And don't even get me started on the elephant in the room, ARK Invest. They've got a massive stake in Ginkgo, and any hint of them bailing could send this stock into a tailspin. In a nutshell, Ginkgo's Q4 report was a big letdown. Revenue missed the mark big time, and the outlook for 2024 isn't much better. It's a far cry from the billion-dollar dreams they were peddling a few years back. The only silver lining here is that the balance sheet's not in terrible shape. But unless they get a handle on those losses and start delivering on their promises, investors might start jumping ship.